Okay. Um, I'm going to run through and do this. Uh, the next time we do a quick draw and the time after that, I'm going to call on people and say, hey, describe what's going on. Tell me what you're thinking. What are the points and all that sort of stuff. So this first one, classic V-shape, all we have to do is just move that one to the left. So it's going to be right here. It's going to go like that. And I can label these points even with a crappy graph, negative 1, 0, 0, 1. Oh, is it frozen? Thanks. Okay. And this one would be, even though it doesn't look like it, negative 2, 1. Okay. Absolute value graph, just move down. So we've got that classic V shape, move down three. So it looks something like this. We can label those points right here, zero, negative three. This would be one comma negative two. And this one would be negative one comma two. Again, same height on each one of those. And then this one, classic V shape, this moves it to the right two and up one. So right two and up one, we're just gonna go with that V shape right here. So this would be two comma one, three comma two. And then this would be one comma two. I did those three points right there. Same type of V shape, except for this one got moved and it got flipped. So it moved to the left three and then down four. So I got to go left three, left three and down four. So we're right here. It doesn't change shape at all. All it does is flip down rather than going up. So we're going to do a graph like this. And then this point right here is negative three comma negative four. And that point would be negative two comma negative five. And this one would be negative four comma negative five. Am I doing okay? Talking and writing a whole bunch at the same time. Square root graph. That's the top half of a sideways parabola. So this is going to be moving right three units. So we're going to go right here. It's going to look like that. And that's going to be three comma zero. This next one would be right one up the square root of one. So that's going to be four comma one. And then the next nice point, I know it doesn't look like it. So I'm just going to make that a really fat point. I would have had to go over four, so that would be seven, and then I'd go up the square root of four, so that's going to be seven comma two. We good there? Okay. Wilson, can you tell me what this looks like? Uh, the same one as the last one. Uh-huh. So instead of the top half of a parabola, it's going to be the bottom, bottom half of a parabola, but it moves to the left. left. So it comes over here, goes like that, and then we could just label those. those uh, let's see. Yep, there we go. So negative two comma zero, negative one comma negative one, and this would be two comma negative two. Am I right about that? Okay. Can I see a thumbs up sideways or down? How are you feeling about quick draws right now? You getting the shapes down? Okay. All right. Okay. That gives me a good idea. If you are not feeling comfortable with this, if you're like, I don't know, I'm, if it's, I have no freaking clue what I'm doing. I can't remember these graphs. We probably need to talk. If it's, I'm just not that fast, that's fine. All we need to do is work on getting faster. There's a big difference between, I don't know what I'm doing and I can't do it as fast as I would like. Okay. So we're just working on speed here. Okay. So would you take out your notes for 2.4? Like I said, we're going to do the notes for 2.4. I'm going to give you the assignment, maybe. And then we're going to correct 2.3, or we might correct 2.3, and then I'll give you the assignment. I don't want, want you to get distracted here. Okay? So this is 2.4. We're continuing this. If you take a look next week, we're going to finish the unit on Monday, practice test on Tuesday, and then a test next Wednesday. Okay? So a week from today is when we'll have the test on this. So <clears throat> here's the I can for today. In 2.4, I can uh, graph, analyze, and write piece wise functions sometimes we'll say the word piecewise defined functions either one's fine the short way to say it is just to say piecewise functions we already did quick draw and we kind of are already familiar with what piecewise functions are piecewise functions consist of two or more functions <clears throat> so i've got an example here you probably have not done very many of these, but when you see piecewise functions in the future, this is roughly what they look like. So this one happens to have, you can tell it's really convenient, one, two, three pieces. And these are the domains on which they look like this. So I'm going to write a where right here. Okay, If you've got room to fit that in there, I'd like you to do that. So we talked about intervals the last couple of days. Intervals tell us where we're looking for a particular type of behavior on a function. So I'm going to write where it looks like this. 
So it's going to look like x plus 2, which is a line right here. That's where it looks like that. So there are a couple different strategies that you can use to graph these. We're going to do the analysis of this function down below here in a second. But I'm going to do this in different pieces. So I'm going to do the first one in red. Then I'm going to do this one in blue. And then I'm going to do that one in green. Okay. Um, you probably don't have colors. So just kind of watch. We're just going to keep this straight. It's going to look like this graph. And this is why quick, quick draws are really helpful. X plus 2. Well, that's a graph that crosses at 2 and has a slope of 1. So it's going to look like this. Now, one advantage you have is you've got a pencil. Okay, I've got a marker up here, but here's the issue. Okay. If I draw the entire line and I hit the eraser on it, it erases the whole line. So I've drawn the entire thing. Slope of 1 crosses the y-axis at 2. Or you could think of it as the linear function moved up to it looks like that when x is less than negative 2. And when x is less than negative 2, we're talking about this part of the x-axis. We're talking about that part. So the only part of this that I'm going to keep is just the part over here. So I need to erase. So if you've got a pencil, you can just erase all of this stuff. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, look, this is what it looks like. Looks like that. It looks like x plus 2 whenever x is less than or equal to negative 2. So on the left side of this graph, all of that stuff over there looks like that. Now, on this end point, I need to be pretty careful. I need to put an open end point or a closed end point. Does anybody know what it is? Got a couple hands up. That's good. And I need a reason why. So you need to tell us open or closed, and then we need a reason for open or closed. D? Uh, it's an open one because they're underneath the greater left hand, the left hand side. Uh -huh. There's no equal to, so therefore it's... There's no equal to, so it doesn't actually look like that line right at negative 2. It looks like that line everywhere that's less than negative 2. Okay? All good? Okay, next one. I'm going to do mine in blue. It's the graph 1. What does that look like? F of x equals 1 y equals 1. People forget this all the time. Mason? It's just a horizontal line. Okay. y equals a number. f of x equals a number is a constant function. It is a horizontal line. x equals a number would be a vertical line, but that wouldn't be a function, so we're never going to run across anything like that. So instead of drawing all of this, I know it can't look like it over here. But I'm just going to do that because I can erase this really quickly. That's the line. Whoops. I did it too high, didn't I? Okay. This is the line. Pretend like I did it right. This is the line y equals 1. There's no way it can be this graph over here because we can't have them stacked on top of each other. It only looks like this between negative 2 and 0. So it only looks like that on this little interval right here. So I'm going to erase almost all of this. I'm only going to have it look like that line right here, from here to here. Angela, open or closed right here? Closed. closed. How come? Because it's um, less than or equal to. Yep, less than or equal to. We've got those equal to's right there, so we can put a closed circle on the end of each one of those. And then this one right here, this would be, let's see, this would cross at 5 and have a slope of negative 2. So I'm going to come up here in green. It's going to cross at 5 and have a slope of negative 2. So down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. And the cool part is I really don't need to draw anywhere near the entire thing, and I certainly don't need to go this way because I know I've already got the shape of the graph over here. So it's going to look like this. Now, I do need to clean this up just a tiny bit. What do I need to do to make this look really good? Okay. Not including zero. It looks like that graph everywhere where it's greater than zero, but not including zero. So I've put a little dot there so I could graph it. I can kind of rectify that by putting a big open circle um, with my eraser. I think I can get away with that. Okay. 
So looks like this red graph, this red line going up from here to here, okay, open end point here, solid end point, closed end point on this constant function right here. Then we jump up here, open end point there, and then it goes off like this. Everybody good? Okay. Intervals on which it's increasing. Intervals on which it's increasing. Lizzie? Negative infinity to negative two. It's increasing there. It's going up. Okay, don't get fooled by the arrow that's going down. We track things from left to right. When we want to know if a graph is going up from left to right, it's increasing. If it's perfectly flat, then it's constant. And if it's going down from left to right, then it's decreasing. So she's right. This is from negative infinity all the way to negative two round bracket on both of them. Crew, how about decreasing? Uh, it would be zero. Oh, wait. Yeah. Zero to infinity. He's right. Zero to infinity. From here forward, from zero forward, it's going to be decreasing. So zero to infinity, not including those. Um, and this is in a slightly different order. We'll skip down and we'll do the constant one. Where is it constant? Zach? Negative two to zero. Negative two to zero. Whoops. Negative two to zero and round or square? Square. Wait, no, square. It doesn't really matter, okay? Because remember, at points, inter, uh, increasing and decrease, decreasing constant, they're not defined at points. They're only defined on intervals. So if you wanted to, you could do square brackets around all of these. If you, if you want to do round brackets, that's fine. Most people do round brackets. It just eliminates the argument. Good. Okay, where is it positive? A little bit tricky here. Hannah, what do you think? Um, negative, infinity to negative two. negative infinity to negative two. Okay, positive? Mm -hmm. Positive means it's um, above the x-axis, right? Um, positive means it's above the x-axis. You want to try again? Negative two comma. Yep, pretty close to three. Let's count these. Down one, down two, right one, down two, right one. It would be about two and a half is where it would cross. Okay, so I'm going to write five halves. And let's see, round or square though? Round or square around the negative two? Si? Square. It is square because it's definitely positive at negative two. And what about the five halves? Sigh again. It would be right on there. Okay. It would be zero right there. So we're going to have to do round around that one. Okay. And the negative, this entire graph is negative. So that's going to be from negative infinity all the way to negative two. And then it starts up again being negative right here when it goes below there. So remember, positive is a question of where is the uh, function above the x-axis. Negative is a question of where is it below the x-axis. So it's going to start up again being below at 5 halves all the way to positive infinity. Everybody good with that? Okay. Um, I'll be honest with you. Piecewise functions are interesting. We don't use them a ton. They're kind of interesting to kind of work out our brain. It's good mental exercise, but we don't run into them a lot. This next part is useful, and you'll see why absolute value is such a pain in the butt. So you'll notice that there's not very much to write down on this. Okay, There are some things down at the bottom. So I'm just going to point this out. Okay, um, It is helpful to look at algebraic, or sorry, absolute value functions kind of algebraically. That's also what kind of makes them a pain in the butt. It's helpful to write them as piecewise functions. So here are a couple of examples. I can take the absolute value of x, and I can write it in two separate pieces. So the graph of absolute value of x requires only the left side of negative x. So it's a line going down from left to right. On the right side, it looks like y equals positive x. If you put those two pieces together, this is what it looks like. So we have the left side right here, left side of the x-axis, looking like negative x. And we have the right side looking like positive x. We've broken it into two pieces. Okay. And then you could actually do some algebra with it. You could solve it and different things like that. This little bar right here, the equal to zero, you could use it on either piece. 
So you could attach it to the negative x. You could say, hey, I want it to stop right here, including that, and then take over with the positive one. So whether you put it on the top piece or the bottom piece doesn't make any difference. Everybody good there? Okay, take a look at this one. This one's a little bit more complicated. This is the absolute value of a parabola. We talked the other day about the fact that we would just take the bottom part of the parabola and flip it upwards, okay? So when we flip it upwards, we have to flip the graph upside down. So we're gonna take this function, we flip it upside down, and we just need the piece that is this little hump in the middle there. So it looks like that graph from negative two to positive two, and it looks like the regular parabola from negative infinity to negative two, and then starting again from two to positive infinity. So that's why we've got the little or here. This is um, negative infinity to negative two. We usually write them in, in uh, inequality notation, and this is from two forward. Everybody good there? Okay. I would be surprised if it's just like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Sometimes these ideas have to get in your head and let them cook for a while. So I'm gonna show you a different way that I hope makes a little bit more sense than just I kind of have to do a visual picture of this and stuff like that. So it should not be a surprise that it takes two functions to make a piecewise function for an absolute value. So you remember when we solve absolute value functions, or sorry, absolute value equations like this, we isolate the absolute value and then we break it into two pieces. Okay, what goes right here? This is one of those details negative that people five. forget. What is it? Negative five. A negative five. So put a negative five right here. Okay. We break it into two equations. So you isolate the absolute value and you break it into two equations. One for the negative case and one for the positive case. One for each direction. So if you flip the page over and we kind of keep that in mind, I want to show you how we can just come up with these algebraically. You can say, hey, what function am I taking the absolute value of? What function am I taking the absolute value of? Wherever it's positive, I get to leave it alone. So it's positive on this integral right here from zero to infinity. So this is where it's positive. Whenever X is greater than or equal to zero. Whenever it's negative, which happens over here, then what I do is I just take that same expression, that same function, I put it in parentheses, and I put a negative in front of it. Because it was negative, I need to make it the opposite of negative, which would turn it into a positive. And if you do a little bit of algebra, you distribute and simplify and stuff like that. If you distribute this through, that would be a negative x, and this is a positive x. And if you flip the page over, go ahead and flip the page over. The one for absolute value x would have a negative x here and then a positive x there. Is that true? The only difference is we simplified it and got rid of the parentheses. So take a look at this one. This is that same function that was on the other side. We've got these negative function values here, and we need to flip those up. So we take the exact same function that's inside the absolute value. Everybody watching? We put it right here and we put it right here. Wherever it's positive, which is from negative infinity to negative two, right there, and from two to infinity, which is this one right here, we just get to leave it alone. But wherever it's negative, which is right here, from negative two to positive two, we have it in parentheses and we put a negative in front of it because that negative is going to make the values that were negative it's going to make them the opposite. It's going to make them positive. It's going to flip that bottom part up here. Now, if we distribute through, this is going to give us a negative x squared plus a 4. Now, would you flip your page over? Isn't that the exact function that they said to use? That's it, isn't it? Okay, so come down here. And we're going to write each one of these as an absolute value function, or sorry, as a piecewise function. So we know what this looks like. This is x plus four. This is gonna move it four units to the, yes, four units to the left. So it's gonna look like that. 
Now, it doesn't say that we need to um, label any points or anything, so we're not going to. So here's the deal. The original one would have looked like this. If I just graphed y equals x plus 4, it would look like that. So we're going to take x plus 4, we're going to put it in parentheses. And we're going to put a negative, we're going to put an opposite in front of wherever it would have been negative. And that would be where x is less than negative 4. And we're going to take what's inside the absolute value and we're just going to write it right here and we're going to leave it alone wherever it was positive. And where it was positive was where x is greater than or equal to negative 4. We doing okay? Okay, so we need to take this. Let's sketch what that looks like. This is a parabola that got moved down to. We'll kind of just quick draw this. Something like that and like this. So I need to take that middle part and I need to flip it up on the top. So it's got to look like this. Yeah. So how come this one is down to the middle of the Because this is absolute value. Oh, let's, oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, you could think of this as moved. Let's see. You can think of this either way. This is what's tough about uh, lines and, and these right here. I'm thinking of we're going to take the absolute value. Think of the absolute value as parentheses. If I put parentheses around the x and then I put a plus 4 in there, that's going to move it to the left. Okay. The function is out is uh, the linear function x. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to add four to it inside with the, with the parentheses and with the absolute value. This is a great question. This one right here, the function is the x squared, the parabola. So I make the shape and then I subtract two from it. So that would be the vertical. Okay, it's a great question. Okay, so I don't need this piece down here. So I'm going to bring these guys back, and it's going to look like this. Now, I'm going to have two pieces. I'm going to do the opposite of this, where it was negative, And I'm just going to do that same graph where it was positive. Okay, but now I run into an issue. And I can't solve this issue without a calculator. So grab your calculator. Graph the stuff inside the absolute value. And this is why we do the stuff where we're asking about, is it positive? Is it negative? What are the intervals where it's positive or negative and stuff like that? What do we need to use the calculator to find on this? Any ideas? Luke? The x-intercepts. Very good. We need to find the x-intercepts. What does the calculator call x-intercepts? They call them zeros. So we're going to type in x squared. And then minus 2, we're going to graph that, and we want to know where it crosses the x-axis. So we're going to hit second calculate. We're going to find a 0, and we're going to say left bound. I'm going to find the one on the right first, and then I'm going to hit a 3 because I'm pretty sure it's not past that. So I've got these two little cursors, these little arrows saying, okay, you want me to find it between here and here? And we hit enter, and it says, yep. 
1.414, so about 1.41. We'll round there. So this is 1.41 comma zero. Um, what do we know about parabolas? About the left side and the right side? They're the same. Okay. So this would be negative 1.414 comma zero. So where did we need this little flipped upside down one? We need it from negative 1.41. to 1.41 need a little more space here okay and then it looks like the other one everywhere else so negative infinity <clears throat> sorry we'll have to do this we'll have to do x is less than negative 1.41 okay and x is greater than 1.41 And now what I'd like you to do is stare at that for just a second. <clears throat> Any questions? Mason's dying to ask a calculator question. Is it a calculator question? No, oh, I was going to wonder if you could do this entirely algebraically without having a graph. Yeah, you can. And we'll learn to do that in unit uh, four. Good? Okay. All right. Last one I want to take a quick look at is that guy right there. Okay. This is just a thought experiment. Just, hey, could you do this? Do those pieces look familiar? And take a good look at the two sides. Is there any way this can be a square root graph? Is the whole thing a square root graph? No. Okay. Anybody recognize this pattern? Zero, zero, negative one, negative one, negative eight, negative two. Keely? It is a cube root. That's a cube root. So it looks like a cube root over on the left side. What's this one? Zero, zero, one, one, four, two. What's this one? Square root graph. So it would look like a square root graph on the right-hand side, square root graph here, cube root over here. Okay. One last thing, then we'll correct. You ready? Okay. There is a button on your calculator that will um, find absolute value for you. Where's the button? If you're not sure and you need to do some math, Lizzie. I find that under math, one. Yep, very good. Whoops. I'm going to hit math. Math, number, it's the very first one. ABS stands for absolute value, so you can do a bunch of stuff with that. All right? Not that we want to neglect the thinking that we went through here, because we definitely want to make sure that we know how to do that stuff. Um, but you can use that button if you need to. All right. Um, I'm going to stop this recording.